If you are a supervisor, don't do this to your people. I remember working for a guy who was a micromanager. He had this fear that if he wasn't involved in the execution of the work, the outcome wouldn't be good. To me, that was just so ironic because he hired people who he believed were competent and capable of doing good work. So here's the problem with micromanagement. It's really a confession by the supervisor that they are insecure. That's what it is. Because there's no better way to show confidence in someone's ability than to give them autonomy, authority, and opportunity to do great work, and this is going to get you to make mistakes. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how you get better. Nobody's born their best self. It takes time to grow into the person you were meant to be. So, this guy would prescribe all the steps you need to take and what you should do. And when you did it to the best of your ability, based on what you thought he was asking, <laughs> the funny thing about this is that he didn't like it. <laughs> this is why I despise micromanagement. I just think it's a waste of energy. If you don't trust the people working for you, then why did you hire them? Why are they on your team? Or better yet, why are you the manager? <laughs> because that's the common denominator. You can change people all day. But if you don't trust people, maybe you should fix your insecurity. <laughs> So, you know, the type of person I am, I'm not a group thinker. I'm not just going to say, yep, do whatever you say. <laughs> there was some conflict because I have an opinion. I have a perspective. And here's the bigger issue. I need to do work that's going to give me fulfillment. <laughs> I'm not Pinocchio. <laughs> I don't need any strings attached to me. If you want to see me dance, keep your hands off of me. Anyway, I just want to encourage you to do uh, a few things. Number one, be honest and say, hey, I appreciate you trying to help me. Because you got to use this type of language, by the way, because if you don't, if you tell them, hey, I need you to stay out of my mix, they're going to be offended. But just say something to the effect, hey, I appreciate uh, you trying to help me and collaborate with me. Um, Give me an opportunity first to execute, and then let's come together and have a conversation. So you're recognizing uh, their positive intentions, if that's what it is, uh, to help create the best outcome, but you're also saying in a nice way, <laughs> leave me alone, let me do my job first, okay, and then we can talk about it. The second thing is ask as many questions as you can in the beginning, right? Because you can't solve a problem that you don't understand. So if they're involved, that is, of course, you can either understand something, not understand something, or misunderstand it. And you can act based on your misunderstanding and make something worse. And thirdly, let's say the person is never satisfied, right? Because you, you have people like that. They just can't let go, you know? I just want to encourage you to be at peace with yourself. Be at peace. You did all the right things. You had the best communication you, you can have, that you know how to have. You did everything to understand what the problem was. You put in the effort. And they're not satisfied. You can rest in peace, baby.